tonight on sightings, Stonehenge, the pyramids, the Bermuda Triangle. Do these places possess deadly mystical powers? Once you experience it, you have a lot of respect for it. Are these unexplainable phenomena proof of a greater force? Are they somehow produced by the Earth itself? Or are they a result of extraterrestrial contact? It seems strange. So many huge markings were made on the Earth. At that point, it started to appear. They had large, dark eyes, claw-like hands. I began sensing and knowing and feeling. I do believe in life after death. I mean, I've been there. We have not scratched the surface of what the mind can do. It's a connection with the unknown. What is the purpose of immense stones carefully arranged on an English country plain? Why are there earthen mounds in the southeastern United States? Who built great granite pyramids in the jungles of Central America? How these places were created remains a mystery. But perhaps the greater mystery is why these places continue to fascinate us on such a profound level. The great forces of the Earth. Some are familiar and essential such as the force of gravity or the dramatic forces of nature. But then there are darker, mysterious forces, feared and revered by ancient cultures, strange energies that science is still at a loss to explain. The forces of the Earth are full of bizarre quirks that can cause destruction, even death. 25 degrees north latitude, 70 degrees west longitude, the center of one of the most mysterious places on Earth, a so-called energy vortex of destruction. It's called the Bermuda Triangle. For 500 years, since Christopher Columbus first wrote about seeing weird phenomena here, more than 1,000 ships and planes have disappeared without a trace. We have no uh, evidence whatsoever that makes the, the region described as the Bermuda Triangle any more dangerous than any other set of waters in the world. But that wasn't the case for Flight 19. December 5th, 1945, 2 p.m. Five Navy Avenger bombers leave Fort Lauderdale, Florida on a routine training mission. The pilots and crew are all experienced airmen. The day is clear and mild. But at 4 p.m., the Avengers begin sending out distress calls. Then, abruptly, the SOS calls stop. The crewmen are never heard from again. This missing squadron, known as Flight 19, becomes one of the greatest air mysteries of all time. Five planes and 13 airmen vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. Did a sudden change in weather cause the disappearance of Flight 19? Did they run into a bizarre geomagnetic force field? Or was it pilot error? But pilot error in all five planes at the same time? Virtually impossible. Many theories have been proposed since 1945. The planes were abducted by UFOs, sucked into a parallel universe, or even fell victim to death rays from Atlantis. 45 years later, a startling development. In August 1991, a barnacle-encrusted Navy Avenger was recovered from the treacherous Bermuda Triangle. Does this bomber hold clues to the fate of Flight 19? When this Avenger broke the surface of the ocean, it was the most spectacular thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was like bringing a body out of the ocean. The mystery still lingers. We're still working on it today. A group called Project 19 is dedicated to solving the mystery. But retrieving the Navy plane also means they must work in the Dentley Bermuda Triangle. There are forces out there. There is a sense of energy about you all the time. You don't know what's going to happen out there. And as the recovery team works to determine if this Avenger was part of Flight 19, other sailors and pilots who dare to venture into the Bermuda Triangle continue to be plagued by the frightening phenomenon. I took the controls of the PBY about two hours out of Bermuda, and it really was a beautiful suddenly, day. Suddenly, as I say, we could not see the wingtips of the airplane. It was like flying in a we tube flying. going through this stuff, and it never dawned on me I was in the Bermuda Triangle. On June 11, 1986, Martin Caden and his wife, Dee Dee, were part of a flight commemorating the history of a PBY flying boat called the Catalina. The Cadens are both seasoned pilots with over 50 years of experience between them. On June 11, Dee Dee was at the controls. Suddenly, all the plane's instruments stopped functioning. 
The magnetic compass was spinning. It was totally useless. We had nothing from the outside world. We were in limbo. We believe there was a tremendous electromagnetic effect. We don't know for sure. But we had $2 million worth of the world's finest electronic instruments just completely crap out on us. Outside the window of the plane, it looked like you were flying an eggnog. It looked like flying through, like in a lemon meringue pie. You lose all reference to what's right, what's left, what's up, what's down. And many airplanes go into an uncontrolled spin and just come out of the sky and smash into the ocean. It was very sudden when we came out of it. And it was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half out of Jacksonville that it cleared up. And little by little, all the instruments began to come back online. The gyros stopped spinning, the magnetic compass settled down, and all the electronic devices came back in and were working perfectly. Martin and Dee Dee Caden survived because of sheer luck. Perhaps, like the Cadens, Flight 19's instruments failed, but the pilot's luck ran out. If that's true, then what is the source of a force powerful enough to make technology useless? It's hard for science to go out there and document it and dissect it because it doesn't happen all the time. But boy, once you experience it, you have a lot of respect for it. It's dangerous. We feel the unpredictable forces of the Earth in the violent eruption of a volcano or a sudden high magnitude earthquake. These events remind us of the tremendous energy smoldering just beneath our feet. Might this energy build to such an intensity that it could transform the entire Earth in an instant. It's 2 p.m. in Los Angeles, and you're stuck on the freeway. Just outside Omaha, it's 4 p.m., and you're finishing up the day's farm work. It's 5 p.m. in New York City, and you're on your way home. Then, at exactly the same instant in time, everyone in the United States, everyone on the planet, shares one fatal experience, an unspeakable catastrophe. On May 5th, in the year 2000, the entire Earth turns on its side. On 5-5-2000, should the polar ice cap go in motion, the first thing that will happen will be tremendous earthquakes worldwide. Gigantic, 8, 9, 10 on the Richter scale. And at the same time, volcanic activity erupting around the seismic regions of the Earth. And the wind, as the Earth shifts, will rage wildly trying to seek a new equilibrium so that the wind speeds of two, 300 miles an hour will literally destroy most uh, dwellings on the surface. Is it possible for the Earth to turn on its side? Could Los Angeles become the new South Pole? Yes, says author Richard Noon. His research indicates that a polar shift is not just possible, it's inevitable caused by a massive accumulation of ice at the South Pole, a theory introduced in part by Albert Einstein. Einstein found that the weight of the ice, the mass, it could be stone, ice, junk cars, whatever, it takes approximately 1,700 pounds of pressure per square inch to fracture the rock, most of it's sedimentary rock in Antarctica anyway, as the ice increases in height and size the weight of it is beyond human comprehension, and it presses, it depresses the ground under the ice. The ground under the ice, in turn, squeezes out the plastic viscous molten material underneath, and that viscous molten material has to go somewhere, and it moves through the Earth's fault lines, and this creates more earthquake and volcanic activity, which is what you see today. Many highly active volcanoes have erupted since Mount St. Helens in 1980. And in a recent one-month period, five earthquakes of a 6.5 magnitude or greater have shifted the Earth worldwide. We're in the middle of an environmental collapse. A shift of the crust of the Earth takes approximately three days to complete, and with it, the destruction of most places on Earth. Within a three-day period, Everything that we now take for granted could violently disappear. The skyscrapers of Los Angeles, gone. The Golden Gate Bridge, twisted wreckage covered in ice. The Washington Monument, a mass of rubble. This is just one man's theory, but the buildup of ice at the poles is one fact in Noon's theory confirmed by some geologists. Presently, ice does build up at the South Pole, but it doesn't build up arbitrarily high because the... Uh... Earth's crust is plastic, and it 
warps down as a consequence of the weight of the new snow and ice that's being piled up. So in reality, the whole depth of the ice cap doesn't get all that much bigger than it is right now. And what about the greenhouse effect? Haven't aerosol cans and industrial pollution created a hole in the ozone layer that's warming the Earth and melting polar ice? What happens is, at least early on, in a warming situation on the Earth, the natural convection currents in the atmosphere itself carry that warm, moist air to the poles where the moisture condenses and falls as snow. Geology, the publication of the Geological Society of America, has recently published research that adds some substance to Noon's theory. But the idea of a radical, instantaneous polar shift is still considered extremely controversial. The theory that's proposed here is the entire crust slides around catastrophically. And there's really no geologic evidence. There's no any kind of climatic, geochemical, geophysical evidence that shows that that's even possible. The supposed trigger for this global nightmare will be a rare alignment of all nine planets on May 5th, 2000, just eight years from now. Noon believes this will be the fatal gravitational yank on the planet. A preposterous theory, perhaps. But just remember, only 40 years ago, no one believed the universe began with a big bang. Today, it's scientific fact. Coming up, a woman who claims to have witnessed unexplainable natural phenomena. I saw this beautiful ball of light in the sky. Certain sites fascinate us because we don't know who created them or even why they're there. And then there are even more enigmatic places where strange phenomena are believed to reveal themselves again and again. Massive prehistoric stone monuments. Many people experience a strange feeling of fascination at these sites. It may be the same type of feeling that inspired the ancients to create them in the first place. When visitors have strange, unsettling feelings, some scientists believe they could be a real physical reaction to unusually high levels of radiation or electromagnetism emanating from the Earth. These places have been deliberately placed in these locations of great natural power and energy. And that all the stone circles in England and Wales that we've uh, closely checked all occur either immediately alongside a geological fault line or in very close proximity. And we find this sort of pattern throughout the world where we've been able to check it. Uh, and it, it, it tells us that people did cho choose specific areas of the Earth's surface because they had certain energetic properties about them. Paul Devereaux is a researcher in the field of Earth mysteries. He investigates the secret energies present at ancient sites, like this bizarre collection of immense stones known as the Avebury Henge, erected 4,000 years ago. For the last 10 years, there have been many reports of unusual lights hovering overhead. They're clearly not UFOs, but frightening apparitions created right here on Earth. Lifelong Avebury resident Heather Garland came face to face with the lights on a clear night in 1987. I saw this beautiful ball of light in the sky. And I thought, oh, lovely, full moon, because I love the full moon and starry night. And I watched it, and I thought, oh, no, ye gods, it's not the full moon. The moon comes in the opposite direction. When it got to the stones, it turned and started coming towards me. And with that, it came right down to the grass and just went out. These lights, nobody knows what they are. They're rather exotic phenomena. Uh, they're not UFOs. They're not flying saucers. Uh, they're somehow produced by the Earth itself. I call them Earth lights. Near the seaside town of Penzance in southwest England, a mysterious light phenomenon has been seen at this 3,000-year-old subterranean chamber known as the Bole Fugu. It continues to mystify visitors. Joe May is a teacher in Penzance and spent a night in the dark underground cavern in June 1988. Just before the point of dawn, I was awake and... I thought I could see spiraling movements, is the only way I could describe them. A sort of soup of spirals swirling around. And they were very like the, um, the shapes on the tips of your fingers. They, they suddenly exploded into stars. There were lots of little pinpricks of light in with them, flowing around. Swirling carvings found in primitive dwellings around the world bear an uncanny resemblance to the site Joe May describes. 
Could that mean that people saw these same lights 3,000 years ago? Another resident of Penzance, artist Gabrielle Hawkes, is drawn to the Bole Fugu by its mysterious energy. It happened some years ago when I was camping in the grounds here. I came into the Fugu. It's dark and dank and mysterious as usual. I kind of began to lose myself in a way. It's a, a feeling of timelessness for a few seconds. And then quite suddenly, it was as though a scene unfolded in front of me. It consisted of um, a scene in bright daylight of a church and a churchyard. I remember the colours were very bright. In some ways it was, a, it was like a dream, but at the same time I was very much awake. I was aware of standing there thinking, well, this is extremely odd, you know, what is going on? Do these strange earth energies explain why ancient people selected these locations for their monuments? Perhaps we are, in the late 20th century, beginning to understand scientifically what our ancestors understood intuitively about the potent energies of the earth. Coming up, are these land markings a result of extraterrestrial contact? No one knows exactly um, what intelligence was behind it. The surface of the Earth covers 196,800,000 square miles. And even though every square mile has been mapped and scrutinized, there are still places of mystery that defy explanation. The ancient Nazca Indians of Peru covered their arid landscape with enormous, precise drawings carved into the rocky desert floor. Photographer Marilyn Bridges came here in 1976. That first journey to Nazca changed her life forever. She's driven by her need to understand what drove the ancient Nazcas to create these designs 2,000 years ago. I feel like I've had a calling in a way. I did photography from the ground for a long time, and when I was in Peru, I heard about these lines of Nazca um, markings that were so huge that you could only see them from the air. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I gave myself this mission to photograph these and bring them back and share them with people. To say, look, this is what ancient man was doing with the land. Maybe something can be deciphered. Perhaps most puzzling of all, why are the hundreds of designs here so enormous? There are animal figures more than 400 feet long. Some patterns extend for over a half mile. Since the Nazca couldn't fly, who were they trying to reach out to with these huge designs? I'm looking at a lot of these uh, markings and structures as if a god would look at them. Drawings for the eyes of the gods is just one theory. Others believe the designs formed an astronomical calendar. But because of their size, some believe these markings were actually UFO landing strips. It seems strange that about two to three thousand years ago, so many huge markings were made on the earth, whether they were dug into the earth or, or um, raised from the earth. Peru isn't the only place Marilyn Bridges has found huge landmarks visible only from the air. For 20 years, she has tried to capture on film the images that ancient cultures have left behind. It is for her an obsession with deciphering the messages of the past. In this pursuit, she routinely risks her life, working from dangerously low altitudes. My flying is almost uh, aerobatic. We have to slow the plane down to stall speed. Sometimes we even go into a stall. Stalling a plane at an altitude of only 200 feet reveals more than just an intellectual curiosity. It's an irresistible need to understand what ancient people had an irresistible need to create. There's a point that it strikes inside of people that maybe it takes them back in time to their heritage, to where we've all come from. Coming up, what mystical powers are hidden beneath the Black Hills? Our legends tell us that the Black Hills is the heart of our home, the home of our heart. For the Lakota Indians, the entire earth is revered. But only one place is truly sacred. They believe the Black Hills of South Dakota are the spiritual heart of the planet. As I have learned about the Black Hills from other tribes scattered 
throughout these, this land, throughout America, or what we call the Turtle Island. What, we, what they understand also is that that is a center. The Black Hills are a center. Modern culture has also been drawn to the Black Hills, but for reasons that are far from spiritual. Gold and uranium are mined here, and over 50 million visitors have marveled at its man-made wonders. The Black Hills booms like a heartbeat. We say it's the heartbeat of the earth. Once mining started heavily in the 1880s, coinciding with the time that we were forbidden to practice our religion, that booming got further and further and further apart. We're not uh, with respect to the, this, this entity, to this earth, to this mother who gives us everything. We say that if the heart cannot live, the earth can't live. And we believe that protecting the Black Hills has to do with all life, all of the children of the earth. When the Black Hills dies, the earth will die. A startling photograph taken from space, a God's eye view, so to speak, may prove the Lakota warning is right. The Black Hills are shaped like a human heart. Primitive cultures and religions worship the earth and man's connection to it. Perhaps by studying their mysterious monuments and seeking an understanding of Earth's unexplained forces, we'll rediscover our own connection to the planet. The distant past may be the key to protecting our immediate future. For Sightings, I'm Tim White. Good night. Next week on Sightings, a UFO investigation team using ultra-sensitive video and laser equipment hunts for UFOs over the California desert. The startling images on an all-new UFO report next week on Sightings. Tomorrow night, for the first time ever, you'll see recordings of convicted mobster John Gotti's secret mafia initiation ceremony, taped by the FBI. Hear the never-before-told story of The Last Godfather, the John Gotti story, a one-hour special tomorrow after Cops. Now stay tuned for Hidden Video.